Hi everybody, welcome back to Bearded Reef. My name's Ross, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how an RODI unit actually works. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bearded Reef. My name's Ross. This right here is my little water box, Peninsula Mini 15 gallon. Now in this video I'm going to try and explain to you how an RODI unit works and why you need one for your reef tank. So first of all I want to thank everybody for taking time to like and comment on my previous video. Um, a massive thank you for hitting the subscribe button as well. The support I've received has been incredible. So a massive thank you to all of you guys. It really really does mean a lot and I appreciate it so much. So back to the video. Now I'm no expert on this but I've had quite a few people asking these questions about how an RODI unit works and so on. So I decided to make this video and hopefully it will help you guys. Um, fingers crossed it does anyway. So first of all I guess we should cover what is an RODI unit and do you need one? So for me anyway the short answer is yes. So let's have a look at that and I'll try and explain why. Now an RODI unit or an RODI reef tank system whatever you want to call it, um, it's more important than you might think. Now we as reefers spend thousands and thousands of pounds, dollars, whatever, and countless hours, a whole host of components and so on that need to support a healthy reef environment. Um, but without the pure water as the basics, it's all for nothing. Um, for many reefers, it's actually far too easy to become caught up on the finer details of the hobby, and you miss out on the key basics of reef keeping. So even though each individual element in the tank impacts the overall condition of your reef tank, Failing to fully understand the importance of the basic water quality will and can give you a whole host of issues in your tank. Now, I'd heard something a few weeks back while well, at my LFS that pretty much perfectly describes what it means to be a successful reef keeper. Um, and although the, the kind of end goal in this hobby is to create a healthy environment to enjoy your corals, fish and other saltwater tank inhabitants, if you look at the fundamentals of this hobby and what's most important, we are water keepers. You know, people say we're reef keepers, but I think we're water keepers. And at first I kind of agreed with that, but I didn't put much thought into the comment. It wasn't until I had a lot more time to think about it and I truly hit home. We're definitely water keepers. That's what we're doing. We're looking after the water. Think about it. In the wild, what is it that destroys marine life the fastest? In my opinion, it's water contamination, pollution. Now, without a perfectly balanced ecosystem, life itself wouldn't be possible. So I guess in the most basic terms, the success of our corals and other inhabitants in our tanks has to be a byproduct of pristine water conditions. I just think that's something that we really need to focus on. So think about all the various methods, products and energy that we put into maintaining our reef tanks. Now it's easy to think that we do all this work for corals and other marine life, but in reality we're doing this to create the healthiest water possible. So having said that, if we satisfy the needs of the water, then surely the water will satisfy the needs of our corals, fish, livestock and so on. So, the thing that I found is unfortunately there seems to be a slight kind of disconnect amongst many reefers, where, yeah, we understand the, the value of the water, but for some of us, we just go to our LFS or go to a friend's house and collect water. We don't really give it a second thought. Me included, fail to properly realise how the source of our water directly impacts everything needed to set the stage for a healthy reef tank. Now, again, full confession, I used to get my water from a large chain of fish stores here in the UK. Um, I'd done that when I first started out, but when I actually went and tested the water, I found it to be well over 200 TDS. Now, this should have been zero. It shouldn't have been 200. So TDS, which is total dissolved solids, um, that's a measure of anything dissolved in your water, except hydrogen and oxygen. So zero TDS is what we want all the time going into our aquarium, nothing more. Now this is the point where I had a massive wake-up call and realised I had to get myself an RODI unit. Um, I had to stop relying on the LFS, other people, so on, for my water. And if I'm honest, it's probably the best thing I've ever done. So let's move on and I'll try and explain what an RODI unit actually is. So RO stands for reverse osmosis, DI stands for deionisation. So these two important processes are what will give you nothing but pure quality H2O. And that's what I call high quality H2O. Oh! Okay, so you may have come across, or you will have come across, the term RODI water or RO water many times during your research when setting up your saltwater reef tank. You might have wondered, what is RODI water? 
do I need it? So the short answer to this is RODI water, basically it's high quality filtered fresh water and yes you do need it. Both for mixing salt water and for topping up your tank with RODI water. This is to replace the water that's lost during evaporation. Now your tank will evaporate, top this up RODI water, not salt water. So an RODI system removes contaminants from our tap water, makes it safe for use in your aquarium. Now when it comes to home water filtration, you can either have an RO or an RODI system. Now an RO and an RODI system are almost identical, except the RODI system has an extra filtration stage. Now this is DI or deionization stage, sorry. This brings the water down to zero TDS. Again, that's total dissolved solids, so I've talked about TDS a lot. Main difference between the two is the level of water purity, basically. So it's used for different applications. An RO system is used to produce drinking water and purified water, mainly for freshwater aquariums. Whereas an RODI system, um, that's used to produce 99.9% .9 pure water. This can be for scientific applications and in our saltwater aquariums like this. So let's just say a simple RODI unit is a modular filter system. It's made up of a sediment filter, carbon filter, reverse osmosis membrane and a DI resin stage. This has got beads um, inside it, which kind of filters and polishes any water. So when you come to choose a system, you're going to be given a choice of how many stages of filtration you want. Now there's lots of units out there in the market today. Um, most of them range kind of between a three stage RODI unit right up to a seven stage. Now the most common of these, I would say is probably a four stage or a five stage RODI unit. Now, when people ask me what I would recommend, I'll always say five stage systems. The reason for that is these have an extra carbon block filter inside them. Now this extra block, it filters out a wider variety of disinfectants. Um, you commonly kind of find them in the tap water, town's water supplies, and it's mainly chloramines. So most reefers are best suited with a five stage system. Now because these disinfectants in the tap water, they will absolutely destroy your carbon filter pretty quickly. So by having two carbon blocks, you make sure you're not allowing these contaminants to destroy your membrane or worse yet, find your way in, find their way in the tank, sorry. So, no matter how many stages you get, they all work in a similar fashion. When the water flows through the filters in a particular order, you'll, you'll achieve zero TDS. That's the end goal. So, the most basic four-stage filtration will produce zero TDS water, but it only contains one of each filtration stage. The larger multi-stage systems simply double up on certain filter stages for additional filtration capacity, shall we say. Um, they'll help target certain impurities, such as chloramine again. Now, the input water, or tap water, feed water, it's fed into the first stage of your RODI system. I've got mine connected via a garden hose adapter. Now, this connects directly onto your garden hose. You get some of the garden tap faucet ones you can use as well. Um, or you can use the tap faucet adapters inside the house. You can also connect it into plumbing. Um, some people put them underneath their sinks or in bathrooms or utility rooms, washrooms, whatever you want to call them. Um, but just bear in mind, these should always, always be connected to your cold water line. You can't connect them to the hot water line because this will damage your RODI system. So cold water only. Okay, so let's take a look at what's inside these stages. I think I've talked about stages enough. So stage one, that contains a sediment filter. Now this is a mechanical filter and it catches the larger free-floating particles of debris or contaminants um, inside the aquatic units, it's actually a polypropylene foam filter, if I'd managed to say that. Um, now, this will remove any kind of sand, rust, silt, any other sediments up to kind of 5 microns in size. Now, this filter will get clogged up after some time and you should change it out every 6 to 8 months, or as needed, basically. Um, the filter will kind of discolour from a pure white colour as it's new to a brownish yellow over time. That's stage 1. So stage 2, this contains a carbon block filter. Now, the carbon's formed in specially pressurised high density blocks. Now, this gains a high adsor adsorption, got that one, adsorption rate of chlorine and other chemicals and organic substances. Stage three is another activated carbon filter. Now, this one will remove 98 to 99% of free chlorine. Um, chlorinated solvents, hydrocarbons, as well as, I think it's 85% of pesticides, phenol, benzene, and other organic substances. So the main purpose of this third stage is basically to accommodate all the heavy usage that we're putting through it and it targets the chloramines. Now this is what will exhaust the carbon filter pretty quick. Therefore, your carbon filter doesn't last forever, it will become exhausted over time and again these should be changed every six to eight months. 
Now, I just say do these at the same time as you do your sediment filter. If you replace the carbon and the sediment filters on a regular schedule, you will drastically improve the life of your membrane. Now, this is basically because it will ensure any kind of contaminants that are going through the water is removed before the water enters your kind of the next stage of the process. Now, this is the arrow membrane. It's the most expensive and the most critical filter stage of the ROVI system, so you really want to look after this guy. Okay, so let's move on to stage four. Now, this is the RO membrane. Now, this is the heart of your heart of your filtration, really. Um, in the system, here's where the water is filtered through kind of multiple layers of a thin film. Now, this removes the majority, kind of up to 98% of contaminants, such as salts, bacteria, heavy metals, and other organic impurities. Most organic, uh, sorry, most RO membranes are constructed as a spiral wound module. Now, this spiral wound module consists of it's a membrane mesh paper or spacer, permeate tube, and the spacer used to create kind of flow channels within these. So within the module, um, they ensure kind of equal distribution of the flow. Membranes glued along three sides, and the open side is connected to a central permeate tube. Now, the membrane sheets are rolled up kind of like a rolled up newspaper, so that's kind of the easiest way I can explain it. Hopefully, the picture on the screen kind of shows that better. But the best way to monitor these are the use of a pressure gauge and or a TDS meter. And in most cases, you'll need to replace your RO membrane every 12 to 24 months based on the usage. I would say if you get between 12 to 24 months out of it, then it's all going well. Now, the RO membrane will then split the water, separate it into two different water lines. The wastewater line and the product water line. The wastewater line will contain your flow restrictor, which is basically a small capillary tube inside the tubing. This regulates the flow through the membrane, 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 and is basically necessary for the operation of the RO membrane. It needs to work on pressure, so this creates the back pressure to force everything through. Now, this is also where you connect the flush valve kit that allows you to flush the membrane free of any kind of particulates before and after every use. So it's quite an important bit of kit in my opinion, anyway. So when it comes to the wastewater, um, I would say wastewater should be routed kind of to your drain or a collection tank or something. Um, for other uses. So wastewater, it will contain kind of concentrated levels of TDS, but it's perfectly fine to use to water your garden, your plants, um, put it on the lawn, wash your car, whatever you want to do with it. I wouldn't drink it though, but it's good enough for that. The product of water will then leave the outer membrane and it's almost pure, but not quite. There's still one more stage to go. So the final stage is stage five. This contains the DI resin. Um, it's a cartridge with the DI resin inside where the water passes over positively and negatively charged resins. Now, these remove any and all leftover traces of contaminants, including silicate, nitrate, phosphate, so on. Now, after leaving the DI cartridge, the product water should and will be zero TDS, and then it's ready for use in your aquarium. That's the five stages. Now, when it comes to our DI units, there are a few things I'd say are must-have extras to complement the system. Now, the first two I'm going to mention are used in order to monitor your system. So this will ensure the system is working properly and these basically is a pressure gauge and a TDS meter. So like I said there, for the outer membrane to work efficiently, it really needs a, ma a minimum sorry, amount of water pressure to help push the water through it. So the only way to see what your pressure is when you supply water is to install a pressure gauge. Now I've got mine installed in a line coming directly from the tap. Um, you can put it anywhere really along that line or from the house pipe or whatever, but your RODI unit really needs to have a minimum of 40 PSI to a maximum of 80 PSI supply pressure. Now, I think that's around 3 to 8 bar. The water temperature is quite important too, and it needs to be between 2 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius, which I think is around 35 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So this combination of temperature and pressure, when it's spot on, is what's required for the membrane to work at its best performance, really. When the input water pressure starts to drop, it's a good indication that your carbon sediment pre-filters are becoming clogged and then you'll need to replace them. So that's a good way to keep an eye on that. If your tap water pressure is naturally below 40 PSI, you're not going to get great performance out of your RODI system. You're going to end up producing far less product water per gallon than the wastewater. So in these cases, you're really going to need a booster pump. The booster pump is going to help boost the pressure in the outer membrane and get you in that ideal range so that your performance is in that ideal range. So an RODI system should produce water at a ratio of around about one gallon of pure water produced to every three gallons of wastewater. 
So don't be alarmed if your wastewater's got a lot more than fresh than the actual product water, that's normal. So for every gallon of pure water you produce, three gallons are going to be wasted. That's why I was saying earlier, it's a good idea to find another use for the wastewater. When you use an RO or an RODI system in your home, especially if you're paying for water, now fortunately up here in Scotland we don't have to pay for water, it's free. So it's not something I have to worry about, but if you're paying for it and you really want to be looking after that wastewater, Okay, so as I mentioned previously, I'd also highly recommend getting an inline TDS meter. Now, the TDS meter is going to measure your total dissolved solids via inline probes. That means you can leave it running with ease in it. These monitors will be plumbed in your system in various ways, depending on where you want to do it. I think it's best to monitor the water after it exits the arrow membrane, as well as after the DI stage. Now, this will tell you that the water exiting the arrow membrane is getting filtered properly, and let you know that water exited in the DI cartridge has been filtered out to zero TDS. When either of these numbers begin to rise, it means that it's time to replace either your membrane or your DI cartridge. You'll be able to see that from which one's rising. You can have one in the inlet, but that's personal preference. Okay, so another extra I'd highly recommend getting for the RODI units, if it doesn't already have it, is the membrane flush kit. Now, I'll always recommend flushing your RO membrane for five to 10 minutes before and after use to remove any waste that may have accumulated in the film. So when your RODI kit arrives, it should contain a flow restrictor device that goes onto the wastewater. You'll see this at the back, it's just a little tube thing. Now, this is the waste from your RO membrane. This device is what helps build the pressure in the membrane to have it work efficiently. Like I've said, you need that pressure there to force everything through. So the membrane flush kit actually bypasses this restrictor and allows the full tap pressure to run through the membrane. Now this flushes out any accumulated matter that's been in there, it'll put it through the waste and out the drain. So it's just a valve that you turn on for 5-10 minutes before and 5-10 minutes after use. This will dramatically increase the life of your auto membrane and is highly recommended to be used every single time. So I think I've covered everything, but to finish, um, yeah, in my opinion, an RODI water unit is probably one of the best purchases you will make for your aquarium. Now, whether that means installing it permanently somewhere like under your sink in the kitchen or utility room, or keep it portable like mine's is, you definitely will not regret the relatively small amount of money that you're going to spend to ensure your aquarium inhabitants have the cleanest environment to live in. Now, not to mention, you're always going to have water on hand for whenever you may need it. Now, that could be an emergency where you need to top up stuff, you need to move stock, or just to save a trip to your LFS to collect more water, and let's face it, pay a small fortune for our ODI water. Now, I know I'm always going to choose to make my own now, I know exactly what's in it, I know it's always going to be zero TDS, and to be honest, I've nobody to blame if things go wrong. Now, I think that's a fantastic thing to have. So if you don't have an RODI unit, or if you're thinking of upgrading the unit that you've got, or maybe just getting replacement parts, or, or any replacement filters, I'd highly recommend Aquati. Now, Aquati is a channel sponsor, but these guys have a fantastic section selection, sorry, of RODI filters, membranes, replacement parts, and accessories. So head over to the Aquati website, have a look, and um, they're extremely affordable, all the units are really, really quite cheap, and they have some great deals on offer. So I'll link them in the description below. Don't forget to use the code BEARDEDREEF10 at the checkout, you get 10% off. Oh, and it's free delivery too, so not to mention the two year warranty on the units. What more could you possibly want? So yeah. I guess I should wrap this up here. I feel like I've spoke at you now for a long time. Um, hopefully you've learned something from the video. If not, I can only apologise. But hopefully it's been of interest to you. Hopefully I've tried to explain how an ROD unit works and why you need one. So once again, I just want to say a massive thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know any tips or hints you've got on ROD units. And hit that like button. But the most important bit is if you could hit the subscribe button. That really would mean a lot to me. Shows me that you like guys like the video and I can continue what I'm doing. But yeah, thanks very much folks. Hope you're all staying safe out there. Um, take care and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.